Well, it's that time. Elections are here. Not sure how to vote? Not sure about some of the names that are on your ballot? Do you want to be a confident voter when you walk into the election booth this election cycle for this Republican primary? If so, stay tuned and I will provide some recommendations for you so you can walk into that election booth to vote with confidence. Stay tuned. Howdy. My name is Melody Allen. I'm a follower of Christ, native Texan, a wife, Texas Aggie, Bible study leader, Christian conservative political activist, and the host of the Patriots Revival podcast. Here on Patriots Revival, we share the good news of Christ and discuss the current political climate in relationship to truth and God's word. In doing so, we hope to educate, inspire, and encourage Christian conservatives to make a radical return to God's word as it relates to politics and every aspect of life. And we hope to get folks involved to help restore God to government. We've got dust on the Bible, so we need a revival, a Patriots revival. Well, howdy, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Patriots Revival. It's election season. Can you believe it? Early voting is now underway, and election day is Tuesday, March 5th. We are in the heart of it. And this time of year, I get asked by a lot of family members, friends, colleagues, church members about the names on the ballot. Because, of course, most everybody knows, especially since we're in a presidential election year, they know president and they may know a few others, senator and whatnot. But we have judicial races on the ballot. We have county offices on the ballot. And so I want to help you be an informed voter as you walk into the voting booth for this Republican primary. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through line by line on a Texas ballot. Now, we'll start at the top, of course, with the presidential race. And, and those of you, if you don't live in our county, in Ellis County, never fear, because there are some state judicial races that are important. So I urge you to, to stay tuned and, and listen, because a lot of these will affect you too. And I'm also going to cover some important key races that are going on across the state. So if you don't live in Ellis County, but maybe you have a state representative that's up for re-election or there's an open race in your area, I am going to mention some key races as well across the state for our Texas House of Representatives. Let's go ahead and get started. So I've got a sample ballot pulled up. And here's one thing that I would encourage you to do. I would encourage you to go to your county's election site and find your sample ballot. Most all county elections administrations have it to where you can view a sample ballot. You can print that off and you can actually take that into the polling place. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. You can either take your sample ballot in there you can take just a simple piece of paper in there with, with recommendations, or if you've done your own research, you can take that into the polling place and use that as you cast your, your vote. You just don't want to leave it behind in the voting booth. And also another no-no I'll tell you, do not, do not have your cell phone out whenever you're in a polling place. It's illegal to have your cell phone out in a polling place, or especially when you're voting. That's why I would encourage you to go ahead before you vote and, and have it figured out who you are going to vote for for each of these races and have it on a piece of paper or bring in your sample ballot that might actually help you. So starting at the top of the ballot, we have president, right? I mean, it's no secret there. I am voting for President Donald Trump. Enough said. I, I you know, if you would like my opinion on why, I'm voting for President Trump. Feel free to email me at info at patriotsrevival.com. But I want to give President Trump another choice. He did so many good things for us, for American citizens, when he was in office before. And, and I want him to serve another term. Next, we have U.S. Senator and Ted Cruz. Same thing. Ted Cruz has done awesome things. He doesn't tend to lean to the left like our other Senator Cornyn does and and 
Ted Cruz really listens to his constituents, strong, staunch conservative, and we need to keep Senator Cruz in office. Now, next is where it might get a little controversial. Next, we have if you're in the Ellis County area or if you're in Navarro County or in Southeast Tarrant County, we have a congressional race on our ballot. And that is, for us, is between the incumbent, Jake Elsey, James Buford, and Cliff Wiley. Now, I'm personally, I am not supporting, I am not supporting Representative Elsey, and, and I've not really been happy with him. There have been some, some votes of his that I disagreed with. For instance, he voted for the $1.5 trillion omnibus bill back in 2022, which sent money to, to Ukraine, and, and it didn't reverse Biden's vaccine mandates and the Green New Deal, a lot of things that I don't necessarily agree with. And a lot of us were not happy that he voted that way. Also, the National Defense Authorization Act of 2024, he voted in favor of that, and I was against that. You know, there's some language in that that legislation or in that bill or that package, I should say, that it, basically it's American people funding a Pentagon that is allowing abortions to happen in the military, gender modification surgeries in, in the military. This package also, there's language in there about promoting CRT and DEI, which is diversity, equity, inclusion, of which I'm against. So Congressman Elsey voted in favor of that. He also voted to suspend the debt ceiling to 2025. And, and I don't know, this country, we have a national debt that is ridiculous. Because he voted to suspend the debt ceiling, that doesn't scream fiscally responsible. And, and as Republicans, we want our, our elected officials to, to be fiscally responsible. In his voting yes to suspend the debt ceiling, that gives Congress and the Biden administration pretty much a green light to, to generate could be a, a ridiculous amount more of, of debt. Could be up as an estimated amount of four trillion more, and we don't need that. So that and and I didn't really care for the way the Speaker of the House vote went with him, where he 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 voted for one of his his fellow military individuals versus voting for Jim Jordan in the initial vote, and and it was just kind of a circus the way that voting occurred, and. and and I don't necessarily agree with that. I know a lot of constituents here in Ellis County, we are unhappy with Congressman Elsey and, and the job he has done. So myself, I'm, I'm supporting James Buford in this race. James Buford is a former pastor. I actually did a podcast episode with James Buford. Check that out. That is episode 11 of the Patriots Revival podcast where I interview him and he talks about why he's running. And I feel like he would probably be a, a better choice than Congressman Elsey. And then there's also Cliff Wiley, who is running in this race. I'm going with James Buford, though. He has moved to Ellis County. His wife ran for school board in Ferris, which is where I grew up. And I have all my roots in, in Ferris. And they've, they've really gotten plugged in to the Republican Party here in Ellis County. They're good people and and. Everything he, he talks about on the podcast and other issues, I've, I've liked what I've heard. So I feel like he would be a good change for us in D.C. to represent us. So I am voting for James Buford. Next, you have Railroad Commissioner and Christy Craddock. She is the incumbent. I definitely support Christy Craddock. Then you have Justice Supreme Court Place 2. That is an unopposed race. The next one you have, Justice Supreme Court Place 4. I am in favor of, or I will be supporting John Devine in this race over Brian Walker. John Devine voted against using eminent domain as a means of acquiring land for Texas Central for the high-speed rail project. Those of you who know me personally know I'm very much against the high-speed rail, so I am, I'm very much appreciative that John Devine was one of the few, was only three justices who, who voted for that. They're not to be, eminent domain could not be used to acquire land for the Texas Central Project for high-speed rail. Going on down the ballot, the next one, 
Justice Supreme Court place eight, Jane Bland, unopposed there. Then you have three very important races, and these are presiding judge or, or judge court of criminal appeals. And you have three incumbents, and of course there are three challengers. And I am going for the three challengers, and I'll tell you why. The three challengers are, in first, presiding judge court of criminal appeals going for David Schenck. Judge Court of Criminal Appeals place seven, voting for Gina Parker, and Judge Court of Criminal Appeals place eight, Lee Finley. And I'll tell you a little bit about these judges. So the incumbents voted in a court case. I think it was back in, I want to say there was a, an election law violation case from 2022 in Jefferson County in which a sheriff, there were some issues with campaign finance reporting. And so this is something that Attorney General Paxton, he, he really wants to replace the incumbents because these incumbents voted that the attorney general does not have the authority to prosecute election fraud cases without the permission of the district attorney. Now, I will say this, these judges that voted this way that is what the Texas Constitution says. That's that's the way it is stated. So you've got to think about, okay, well, they were following the Texas Constitution, but it is a little bit crazy that our own attorney general cannot prosecute or bring charges for election fraud without the approval of the district attorney. So for these reasons, Attorney General Paxton is asking voters to support the challengers, again, David Schenck in for presiding judge, Court of Criminal Appeals, Gina Parker for judge, Court of Criminal Appeals, place seven, and Lee Finley, judge, Court of Criminal Appeals, place eight. So those are very important races. I want to thank my friend Vicki Dillo for sending us an article on this, and I'll put a link in the show notes about this. If you want to read a little bit more about this, it's a it's a really good article about the importance of these three judicial cases because most of the time people don't even know about these judicial races. So those are three that you really need to get the word out about to get these three individuals in office, David Shank, Gina Parker, and Lee Finley. Now we've got our state representative, Brian Harrison, our awesome Fighting Texas Aggie state rep, Brian Harrison. Thankfully, he does not have a challenger, so he's just listed on the ballot. We're going to be sending him back to Austin for another term, and that's good. So with, with that said, though, I want to talk a little bit about some other races across the state of Texas. You may not necessarily live in Ellis County. Maybe you live in South Texas. Maybe you live in Dallas County. Maybe you live in East Texas. But folks, our Texas House, even though Republicans are in the majority, it is not run by Republicans. There are a lot of Republicans down in Austin that just have an R by their name, but they tend to vote left. They lean a little bit left. We truly need to clean the Texas House. If you don't believe me about what's going on down in Austin, I would tell you to go to YouTube and find a documentary called The Texas Heist that was produced by Texas Scorecard. It's fascinating. It's not a very long documentary. It's about, I want to say, 30 to 40 minutes. But it basically talks about how Republicans are running the Texas House. And it basically talks about how Democrats are running the Texas House because we have our Speaker of the House, Dade Phelan. He has an R by his name, but he continues to appoint Democrats in key leadership positions on committees. And the problem with this is when we have strong Republican fighters, people like our representative Brian Harrison, Tony Tenderholt, Nate Schatzline, among others who are really truly fighting for conservative values and, and for conservative le legislation, the problem is when you have a Democrat that is the head of that committee Whatever, for whatever legislation they want to introduce, that legislation usually goes nowhere. It goes to that committee to die. So that's why there are some key races across the state, and I want to highlight those just real quick. One or a couple down in the Hill Country, West Verdell in House District 53, and Kyle Biederman in House Di District 19. Again, they're down in the Texas Hill Country. 
Kerrville, Fredericksburg, those areas, West Verdell is running in a seat that was previously held by Andy Murr. And Andy Murr, you may know that name because he was the one who led the charges about of impeachment for our Attorney General Ken Paxton when there really just wasn't sufficient evidence. Thankfully, Andy Murr has not de has decided not to run again. But there is another individual running against West Verdell, and and I have heard and and seen some articles and listened to some podcasts about this individual hasn't even voted in Republican primaries over the last several years. So it's probably the left's way to try to get someone in there against West Verdell. But but we need to support West West Verdell, and then Kyle Biederman. Kyle Biederman in House District 19 is running against Ellen Troxclair. Ellen Troxclair also was another Republican who voted to impeach A.G. Paxton. She has also voted on some other legislation that was very left-leaning, and, and we need to get Ellen Troxclair out of there and get a good conservative Carl Biederman in there. Carl Biederman served previously and then decided not to run again when Ellen Troxclair ran, but he's, he's now running because he's seen that Ellen Troxclair did not fulfill her campaign promises of staying true to her conservative values. So if you live in the Texas Hill Country in House District 53 or House District 19, just make sure you vote for Wes Verdell and Carl Biederman. Also, David Covey. David Covey is going up against our Speaker of the House, Dade Phelan. That is over in the Beaumont, Orange, Texas area, Southeast Texas. And we need to get David Covey in there, folks. Dade Phelan has got to go. And I mentioned how Dade Phelan appoints Democrats in key leadership positions and and really leans left as well. And and again, check out that documentary called The Texas Heist on how Democrats are truly running the Texas House. We need to get we need to get Dade Phelan out of there and need to get David Covey in there. Another important race if you are in East Texas in Van Zant County, Hunt County. Brent Money is running up against the incumbent, I think Jill Dutton there, and Senator Bob Hall, my very own senator. Bob Hall, one of the most conservative senators in the Texas Senate, is endorsing Brent Money. That's in House District 2. And if you live in the Waco area, Debbie Duke, I know Debbie Duke, and she is, she and I are members of the Texas Federation of Republican Women. She is formerly our district director for Texas Federation of Republican Women. She is a good, strong, conservative Republican that we need to get in the Texas House. So if you live in the Waco area, vote for Debbie Duke for House District 56. Another important race is House District 60. That is if you live in the Palo Pinto area, Parker County, Stevens, and Mike Olcott is who we are supporting in that race. And there are a plethora of other important ones around the state, but these are these are ones that come to mind. And And I will tell you folks, you may say, well, I don't live in any of these counties. First of all, I don't live in Ellis County, or I don't live in Parker, or I don't live in McLennan. But if you care about what goes on in your Texas house, you could give one, some, or all of these candidates $5 or $10, and you could support their campaign. And I'll tell you, you may say $5, $10, $20, that doesn't make a difference. Folks, for years, I thought that, you know, I needed to support a candidate and I needed to give them $100 or more. I needed to give them $500. That is not the case. When you have grassroots activists like, like you and like me, you can see who grassroots activists truly support by pulling up their campaign donations and campaign finance. If a candidate has a lot of five, 10, 15, $20 donations versus hundreds of thousands of dollars from a pack, that tells me that the true grassroots voters support those constituents. So that really helps. If you can just donate five, ten, fifteen dollars to some of these candidates' campaigns, that will help, and that looks really good for them because that shows that people like you and me are supporting them in their efforts to represent us in the Texas House. So I would say, even if you don't live in any of these counties or any of these house districts, look up some of these names and donate a few dollars to their campaign. To, to show everybody that they are true conservatives and they don't necessarily need big PAC money and, and be influenced by that down in Austin. So 
Now, we're going to circle back to some judicial races and more county-specific races. We're going to talk about Chief Justice 10th Court of Appeals District and Judge Matt Johnson. He is the incumbent, and we know Matt Johnson, great guy, but no challenger there. District Judge 378th Judicial District and William Doug Wallace, no Judge Wallace personally, no challenger there. Now we get into District Judge 443rd Judicial District, and we have three Republicans in this race, and it's no secret who I'm supporting. I'm supporting Greg Wilhelm in this race over the other two candidates. If you would like to know more about Greg Wilhelm, check out episodes 9 and 10 of the Patriots Revival podcast in which we interview Judge, I already was going to call him Judge Wilhelm, in which we interview Greg Wilhelm. So definitely supporting Greg Wilhelm in that race. The next one is Judge County Court at Law number three. No incumbent there, Joe Gallo. He will remain in that role. And then we have our heated election of district attorney here in Ellis County. Ellis County and district attorney, Lindy Beatty and the incumbent, and I am voting for Lindy Beatty. There have been all kinds of problems with the district attorney's office. 45 out of 55 employees have left the district attorney's office in the last three years, and there is a backlog of, of case filings and all kinds of problems, from what I understand, are, are going on there in the DA's office, and we need a change. Lindy Beatty is the, the best candidate, in my opinion. If you would like to learn a little bit more about Lindy, check out, that would be episodes episode seven and eight of Patriots Revival to see the two-part interview series with Lindy Beatty. And then our Sheriff Brad Norman is not up for, he's up for re-election, but no challenger there. Richard Rozier, our tax assessor collector, no challenger there, so he will stay in that role. Our county chair, awesome county chair, Randy Bellamy, no challenger there, he will stay our Ellis County GOP county chair. Now, we're going to move into ballot propositions, and this is something that will be on every single Republican ballot across the state of Texas. And people ask me about this, and they'll say, Melody, what are these? So I think there's a misconception that these these props that are on the ballot are, are things that we as voters are voting to go into law or go into effect. And that's not the case at all. These particular propositions are for the Republican Party to get a feel or a gauge or a pulse on these issues so that when the state GOP convention rolls around in May of this year, delegates like myself will vote on the party's platform for the 89th state legislature, which will start in January of 2025, because the Republican Party will have adopt the list of, of, of platforms or issues that we want to focus on in the next legislative session in Texas. And that's what these issues are for, to get a gauge for if these issues are important to Republican voters. So we're going to run through those really quickly. Prop 1 says Texas should eliminate all property taxes without increasing Texans' overall tax burden. Absolutely. Who wants to pay property taxes? Prop 2, Texas should create a border protection unit and deploy additional state law enforcement and military forces to seal the border, to use physical force to prevent illegal entry and trafficking, and to deport illegal aliens to Mexico or to their nations of origin. Yes, we need to do that to secure our border. Prop 3, the Texas legislature should require the use of E-Verify by all employers in Texas to protect jobs for legal workers by preventing the hiring of illegal aliens. Yes, we definitely want that to, to make sure that we as American citizens are able to, to fill those jobs first and foremost and, and so that we don't employ illegal aliens. Prop 4, the Texas legislature should end all subsidies and public services, including in-state college tuition and enrollment in public schools for illegal aliens. Yes, we are going to vote yes on that. Prop 5, Texas urges the United States Congress not to grant any form of amnesty or a pathway to legalization for illegal aliens. Yes, we agree with that. Prop 6, the Texas legislature should prohibit the deployment of the Texas National Guard to a foreign conflict unless Congress first formally declares war. Yes. 
Prop 7, the Texas legislature should establish authority within the Texas State Comptroller's Office to administer access to gold and silver through the Texas Bullion Depository for use as legal tender. At first, I didn't really understand this, but I think I've, I've done a little bit of research and talked with some others about it. I believe this is established as a, another means of currency. If something happens to the American dollar, you know, that we would have this silver and, and gold reserve in the Texas Bullion Depository as a means of, of securing currency. And if I'm wrong on that, somebody please email me or let me know, but that's my understanding of that. So I'm going to say yes on that. Prop 8, the state of Texas should ensure that Texans are free to give or to withhold consent for any vaccine without coercion. Absolutely. We, my friends over at Texans for Vaccine Choice, Rebecca and, and Michelle, this is what they fight for. We don't want the government, whether it's the federal government, state government, we don't want anyone to force a vaccine on us. That should be the decision of the individual. So that is the yes. Prop nine, the Republican Party of Texas should restrict voting in the Republican primary to only registered Republicans. Right now we have open primaries, which means a Democrat could come in and vote in a Republican race. And that happens, especially let's say that there are no Democrats in a particular race on the ballot, but maybe like in our judicial cases that we talked about earlier, where we have one race, the 443rd court, where there are three Republicans running in that race. Well, a Democrat could choose to vote in a Republican race and vice versa. So this basically says that we're going to close our primaries to where you are you are only going to vote. If you're a Republican, you will vote in a Republican primary. If you're a Democrat, you're going to vote in a Democrat primary. Prop 10, the Texas Constitution should be amended to restore authority to the Texas Attorney General to prosecute election crimes. Now, we talked about those three judges, those three judicial races in which the incumbents all voted that the Attorney General doesn't have the power to prosecute for election crimes because of the way the Texas Constitution reads in that the district attorney has to approve that. So we are wanting that to see what voters feel about that. Should we make it so that the attorney general can prosecute for election crimes? So we're yes on that. And then Prop 11, this one's a little controversial and I may ruffle some feathers with this, but it says Texas parents and guardians should have the right to select schools whether public or private, for their children, and the funding should follow the student. I'm all for parents selecting the type of education, where and how their children get their education. I'm just not necessarily for paying for education or private education, especially if it teaches things that I, as a taxpayer, am not in agreement with. Now, some people will tell you, Melody, that's already happening in our public schools, so you're already paying for that through your tax dollars, and we see the left agenda coming in and teaching very liberal ideology in our public schools with CRT and, and social emotional learning and, and then the whole LGBTQ agenda that is being pushed in our schools, the dirty library books and whatnot. So, yes, I agree. Those are all issues that I think that we need to fix. I just don't know that I necessarily agree with my tax dollars going and supporting somebody who is putting their child in a school. I'm just going to throw this out there. Let's say that it is a satanic school. Well, me as a Christian, I don't know that I really, I don't necessarily want my tax dollars being going to the education of, of someone who is being educated in a satanic form of education. So I know this is not something that goes into law. I will let this play out in our state legislature, but I am probably going no on that. Again, I'm sure you guys are going to just uh, eat me up and say all kinds of bad things about me, but but that's my personal right. I just, I don't like the tax dollar portion of that. So that's that's what I'm saying. I am not saying that parents don't have a right to to choose the type of education for their children. I just don't know that I want my tax dollars. I, I want more clarification on that before it's decided. Yes, maybe we need to make that a priority, but I, I want to 
I want to let that play out in the state legislature and and work with my state representative and other elected officials on this to to tweak it. So I'm I'm leaning no on that, but at the same time I know it's an issue and it needs to be addressed and we could we could get all that figured out in in a legislative session. And then Prop 12 says the Texas Constitution should be amended to require proof of citizenship before any individual can be registered to vote. Well, duh. Yes, you should be an American citizen to be able to vote in an American election or state election or whatever it may be. Prop 13 says Texas should ban the sale of Texas land to citizens, government, and entities from China, Iran, North Korea, and Russia. Absolutely. We don't want communist countries or these powerhouses that have a a, a bad agenda coming in here and, and trying to buy our Texas land and do who knows what to try to encroach upon that. So, folks, that is your your ballot for Republican primary in Texas. I want to remind you of some scripture. God really wants to be intricately involved in the election process and because God should be at the center of everything. That's why we need to vote. You know, I want to read you some quotes from the Tony Evans Kingdom Politics book. I love returning God to government. And this is one of my, one of my favorite books. And there's a section, chapter 10, on the voting of kingdom citizens. And he says, when we involve God in politics, we can begin to see healing in the church so that it can be modeled in the culture. You know, some other quotes from this book, Dr. Tony Evans says, voting is your opportunity to engage in politics in a meaningful way. If you're a Christian and you name the name of Jesus Christ, you don't get to leave God out of your vote. Amen. And as always, because Patriots Revival, we tie the political process and the political climate to God's word. I have some Bible verses I want to share with you today. The first is Psalm 1633. It says, we may throw the dice or we may throw things to chance, but the Lord determines how they fall. Because you may say, well, you know, I'm not going to vote because I I can't really make a difference or whatever. Well, God determines our elections. So we may leave things to chance. We may throw the dice is is what they did back in the day or cast lots. But the Lord determines how they fall. That's Proverbs 16.33. Also want to share with you Acts 1, 24 through 26. Then they all prayed, O Lord, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in this ministry, for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other 11. So even even the apostles, even the disciples kind of voted on, on who would be part of their group, because as we know, you know, Judas had betrayed God. And even then they, they prayed that God would make the right decision. And then they, they, you know, God showed them. They cast lots. Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other 11. So that kind of goes back to Proverbs 16, 33, where we say that we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. And then finally, I want to read with you Psalm twenty two twenty eight: For royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. So I really hope that that you will vote in this election and really make your voice heard. Remember, early voting starts Tuesday, February 20th, and goes through Friday, March 1st. And then we have a few days off, and election day is Tuesday, March 5th. If you would like recommendations on who you should vote for in your area, maybe it's someone that we did not mention on Patriots Revival today. Shoot us an email at info at patriotsrevival.com, especially if it's a Texas House race, one of your House of Representatives. If it's a state representative race, I can probably provide you with recommendations on who to vote for. Because I'll tell you, I actually help friends and family and colleagues and others across the state. I will get people that will call me and say, Melody, I don't know anything about my county commissioner's race. Do you know anything at all? And I'll do some research, and I probably have a friend or somebody in that area who could give me some feedback on those local races. But feel free, again, to shoot us an email at info at patriotsrevival.com 
we will try to provide you with some recommendations on some races. We'll do the best that we can. We can probably help you out. So keep that in mind. Would love to be a resource for you if we can. So your altar call this week, there are two parts to the altar call. One is what I mentioned early on. Go to your county's election site, print out your ballot, and go through, either rewind this episode of Patriot Survival and, and go back through if you want to go with the recommendations that I, I am putting forth and, and fill those out. Take that into the polling place. You have a right to take that into the polling place, as we mentioned early on. So print your paper ballot, print your sample ballot, and take that with you and, and do your research and have it ready before you go and vote. And secondly, just go cast your vote. Do that for me. Do that as your as your rights, as a God-given right, as a citizen to to cast that vote. And as always, we close each and every episode with our favorite verse, which is Psalm 119.25 that says, revive me by your word. What does that mean? Spend time in God's word. Folks, we can't heal our county. We can't heal our state. We can't heal our nation if we do not have a relationship with God, if we are not studying God's word, if we are not getting to know God. Having a relationship with Christ really impacts our relationships and, and with other people, with our elected officials, with other citizens, with people you work with, with your husbands, with your wives, with your children, with your coworkers. Revive me by your word. Spend some time in God's word. Let's start a revival in your soul and start a revival here in our country. And I hope this episode will make you want to dust off that Bible because we need a revival. And I hope this episode will ignite your inner patriot and exercise your right to vote and want to get involved. That's all we have for this week, folks. Have a great week. Have a reviving week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed the show, please follow us and tell others. If today's show revived your faith and your inner patriot, join the Patriots Revival Facebook group by going to facebook.com slash groups slash Patriots Revival for resources on how to get involved in being salt and light in a world of darkness. Are you local to the Ellis County, Texas area? If so, check out the Patriots Revival podcast, The Local Show. For info on local issues, candidates and elections, a calendar of events of conservative organizations in the area, and ways for you to get involved. Finally, if you would like to contribute to the production costs of the Patriots Revival podcast, you can do so through Zelle by inputting info at patriotsrevival.com as the recipient. Thanks again for listening. I hope you have a reviving week.